with Dr. Candy. So if you haven't watched any of these before, this is the way it works. Step one, exercise question is posed. Student pauses the video and you attempt the question. Continue to play the video. We'll provide a hint with a little bit of assistance if required. Then continue to play the video. The answer is provided. But here's the power of the videos. We'll also give you a worked explanation of how we got to the answer and continue the video to the next question. So here we go. Question one. The direction of the counter EMF in the armature conductors of a DC motor may be determined by 1. The right hand solenoid rule, B. Fleming's left hand rule for motors, C. Fleming's right hand rule for generators, or D. Faraday's rule. So pause here and have a think. Here's your hint. It's not about the solenoids. We can eliminate the solenoid rule. And even though it's a motor we're talking about, because we talk about counter EMF or back EMF, we would actually use Fleming's right hand rule for generators. Because it's the back EMF or the counter EMF that we're talking about. So we would use Fleming's right hand rule for generators despite it being a motor. Of course it's counter EMF. The back EMF induced in the armature of a DC motor is equal to A volts total minus the current in the armature multiplied by the resistance in the armature B just the volts total C the volts total plus the armature current and armature resistance multiplied or D just the armature and current and the armature resistance multiplied Here's the hint. Is there a difference between VT and Watt? So it is about difference. So what's the back EMF? Difference between Watt and Watt. So the answer is A. It's the only one that has a minus sign in it, so it's the only one that looks at difference. So the voltage total multiple device, I'm sorry, voltage total subtracted from the armature current multiplied by the armature resistance which gives you the armature voltage. Question 3. The torque of a DC motor is proportional to the product of what? Remember product means multiply so the torque of a DC motor is proportional to the multiplication of what? A. The supply volts and current. The flux and armature current. C, the flux and field current, or D, the armature current and the field current. Here's the hint. What two things interact and create torque? So there's two things that inter interact and create torque. What are they? So our answer is the flux and the armature current. So they're the only two things. You can have stronger fluxes and stronger current. And the torque is proportional to the multiplication of those two things. You're going to get more torque and more armature current if the flux goes up or the current goes up. Or they both go up. Question 4. The effect of armature reaction in a DC shunt motor increases as. So the armature reaction in a DC shunt motor will increase as. Load current increases, field current increases, speed increases, the load increases. Here's the hint. Armature reaction is a mechanical reaction between the magnetic fields. So as the load increases is what it is. It's a mechanical thing. As the load increases, it twists the magnetic field more and you get armature reaction.
five the torque of a shunt motor at a given value of the field flux does what? Is inversely proportional to the armature current, varies through the square of the current, C is directly proportional to armature current, remains as a constant. Here's the hint. How is torque created in a shunt motor between armature and watt? So it is directly proportional to the armature current. So the torque is directly proportional to the more armature current you've got, the more torque you will produce between the armature and the field. The back EMF in a shunt motor on a light load is equal to the supply voltage, less than the supply voltage, higher than the supply voltage, or there is no difference. So you've got to think about Lenz's law. What's Lenz's law about? So it's less than the supply voltage. The back EMF has got to be less. If you don't have the back EMF less than the supply voltage, then you won't get any torque developed. And that's going to be an issue. To reverse the direction of rotation of a shunt DC motor, for A, reverse the armature and field windings. B, armature is reversed. C, reverse the supply leads. Or D, the armature is changed end to end. It's mechanical switching the armature around. So what interaction causes rotation to start? So we're right back to the basic principles of how a DC motor operates and which way it's going to spin. Depends on how the armature coils interact with the field. So you've got to reduce, reverse the armature. So if you, A, if you reverse the armature in the field, everything stays the same basically. If you reverse the supply, everything stays the same, and it's almost impossible to reverse the armature end to end, so that eliminates D. So it has to be B, armature is reversed. They're the only options that would fit. Eight, the reverse, the direction of rotation of a compound DC motor. You can change A, the interpole series field connections get reversed. The shunt and series fields get reversed. The shunt field connections are reversed or both the series and field connections are reversed. So again, what interactions? Let's go right back to the basics of how a DC motor is built and works. So here the only option we had that would do the trick is the shunt field connections. It's the only one that's going to work. You've got to change the shunt field connections. The interpoles will make no difference. The shunt and series field reverse means you reversed everything and it makes no effect. And if you reverse the series field on the armature again, you're not creating any real reversal. Everything stays relatively the same. So no change in direction. Nine, determine the power produced at the shaft of a motor operating at a thousand RPM if the torque produced is at a speed of 40 Newton meters. So we're doing a thousand RPM and this produces 40 Newton meters. What's the power? He 
is the hit power is equal to torque multiplied by speed divided by 9.55 if you remember there was that constant so here's our answer our formula power is equal to torque multiplied by speed divided by 9.55 so simply the torque at 40 newton meters multiplied by the speed at 100 rpm divided by our constant and in this particular case you should have got 4188 watts determine the armature current of a 240 volt DC motor if the armature circuit resistance is 0.16 of an ohm and the back EMF is 235 volts so back EMF 235 volts and we have 0.16 ohms and the armature current of a 240 volt DC motor so here's the formula as a hint I equals VT minus EG divided by RA So we have our volts total of 240 minus 235 divided by our current at 0 0.16 and it means we're going to have a current of 31.3 amps. So it was simply our voltage difference divided by our Resistance of the armature. So this brings us to the end of electromagnetism tutorial exercises number nine.